in these days, it's very seldom we see the life committed to serve the Lord. I'm not talking about being part of the church. I'm talking about actively involved in serving the Lord in the church and in the community that God has placed. Churches and missions take extra effort to see and encourage people to come to serve the Lord. Even after 2,000 years plus, Jesus said, to go and make disciples, we still see a very small percentage of people who have been reached by the good news of Jesus Christ, by the gospel. I don't know how many of us see this as a concern for the body of Christ. When I say body of Christ, we are, we individuals are part of this body of Christ. But there is something that we need to think deeply being part of this body of Christ, not just City Harvest Church, but as a universal church also. What that we can do to see what God has laid upon our hearts or the commandment that God has given, the great commission that God has given to reach gospel to people who have never heard the name of Christ. What you and I can do is a question, is a concern that I personally feel is strongly before us. We can either ignore us and walk in the routine way of being a believer in a church or we get involved and see how I can make the difference in the kingdom of God. I don't think the solution are found outside the church. I strongly believe the concerns that we will see the questions we will have in our minds can be answered right within inside the church. We don't have to seek the answer outside, but here inside the church. What we can do to proclaim the name of the Lord so that we see that the name of Jesus is proclaimed not only just within the church community, but also in the community where God has placed each individual in different parts of the city or states or nation we can see in a larger picture. I strongly believe, not just now, but it's been there for a long time in my heart, I strongly believe that every single person in the church will need to step out and commit the life to serve the Lord in the capacity that we have. Now, not everyone can be preacher, I understand that. Not everyone can be going out and being and sharing the evangelistic uh, messages all the time. No, probably not. But at least whatever God has given in our life, the ability, the skills that God has given us, we can contribute our share to make sure the vision that God has given upon our life is fulfilled. And for that, I strongly believe that every single member of the church, every single person in the church, we are built to build the kingdom of God. Amen. We are built to build the kingdom of God and we are kingdom builders. And that's my title today for this today's message. We are built to build the kingdom and we are kingdom builders. Let us look into the scripture to just ponder more, please open with me the book of Exodus chapter 35, verse 30 to 36 chapter verse 7. I'd just like to read it quickly uh, for you from that portion. Not the complete, but just a portion so where I would like to emphasize more. Exodus chapter 35, verse 30. Then Moses said to Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God. I would like everyone to focus on verse 31. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts. To make artistic design for the work in gold, silver, bronze, to cut 
and set stones to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of artistic craftsmanship. And he has given both him and Ohiliab, son of Ahisamak of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with the skill to do all kinds of work as craftsmen, designers, embroiders, in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen weaves. All of them master craftsmen and designers. So Bezalel, Oheliab, and every skilled person in whom Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as Lord has commanded. I'll stop here and I'll allow you to read through the portion, the passage in your own convenient time. I think many of us probably already know the background, the story of uh, the same uh, passage. Before going to the context, I would like to just take a moment to just share a couple of questions that probably crosses our mind. It's possible that whenever we see a need, we want to step in. We want to do something. We want to take care of the situation that we feel that we should. And when we feel that we are chosen, we are, we are probably meant for it. But then the question comes in our mind. Am I the right person? Which in another way we can also say, am I the chosen one? The second question could come into your mind, can I do it? The other way we say is, do I have the ability or resources to do this task? Third, how can I do it alone? And the other way to ask is, will God be with me? These are the basic questions that may probably come in our mind. I strongly feel that this message is meant for all those brothers and sisters in the church who probably have come across these questions, wanted to do something, but these are the questions that hold you back and probably not allow you to free yourself and still be bounded with hesitation to not to commit, to do something that God has laid or the Spirit of the Lord has laid upon you to serve the community that where God has placed you. What is it that is holding you back? Is it the fear? The fear of failure? Or the fear of inability? What is that you are hesitant about? That I can't do it? Or how can I do it alone? And all the brothers and sisters who are going through these kind of questions, probably at one time of your life, this message, I strongly believe the work God has given to us is for each one of us. And these are valid questions. It's not intentionally thought through kind of question. These are the natural questions that comes in our mind. But I strongly believe God is interested in our life. Everyone's. And that's why he made us the kingdom builders as a part of the body of Christ. We are his kingdom builders. We may have different roles and responsibilities. We may have different abilities, but whatever we have, when we give into the hands of the Lord, God is going to use it as per, for his glory. Whoever he has loved, whoever he has chosen, he has made us kingdom builders. This morning I want to take three points from the life of Bezalel and the passage that we have just referred. The first point, I am chosen. Which also means it's not that I chose myself but God chose me. Because he chose me. That's why. The context that I'm talking about is the time when God liberated his children, Israelites, from the slavery in Egypt. They are now led by God's chosen one, Moses, to the promised land through the wilderness that developed the nature of grumbling. They are homeless, even deserted God and worshipped an idol. Therefore, God asked them to make a sanctuary, the tabernacle, a dwelling place where God can dwell among them. The presence of God living among his people is a significant theme in those period, throughout the Bible, in fact. We see in this book of from the time of Genesis and even in New Testament where we see 
God sending his own son to dwell among us and now in our generation his spirit dwelling among us and when he is among us his presence is here he has chosen you and me to work along with him to serve the community in his mission we are partaker of something that god is doing in our city in our community in our neighborhood and in our nation on in this world wherever we are placed when we become part of his presence we belong to his kingdom and thus we are his kingdom builders now what do we see in the text we see there is a need of building a sanctuary we see the need for people in specific area to work for his sanctuary we see also a willing heart of bezalel who is ready to do what lord has commanded let us look around in our community the city what do we see do we see need now we don't have to look around the whole city of bangalore but at least in your neighborhood do you see a need there do you see yourself as a person placed by the lord in that neighborhood to do something that god is working through his spirit we may see it we may not see it but he is on the move and he is working through his spirit continuously in our neighborhood in our community through his church some people they sense it they ask for sensitive heart god help me to understand help me to know your vision help me to know your plan that i am ready to commit myself to do something to step out to work for your kingdom to serve not on my own but along with you because this is not my kingdom this is not my work this is your work this is your kingdom and this these are your people i am only chosen specifically to work along with you lord and i said not everyone can preach probably i was very hesitant to stand on pulpit very hesitant in fact i preached once and i stopped preaching for many years because of many questions in my mind but none of us are perfect let us do what god has enabled us to do if we can pray my brothers and sisters go ahead and pray for that person that god has given upon your heart if you can sing go ahead and sing for the lord if you can play an instrument play the instrument for the lord if you can share if you can encourage if you can motivate go ahead and do it for the lord don't hold yourself back thinking this is somebody else job no it is your job because you are the center of god's plan for his kingdom you and i are not at the fence or probably across the fence you and i are at the center of his plan for his kingdom for his people on this earth all we have to do is identify what we can do and i'm sure we all have abilities we all have some of the other skills in our lives we probably may not be able to do everything but at least one or two things we can do identify your area of contribution prayer sharing test sharing testimony going to the person if you can't speak that's fine just lay your hand on the shoulder and through your presence give the comfort to that person if you can encourage encourage if you can motivate motivate if you feel hesitant to pray aloud pray in silence along with that person but do what god has enabled you to do and go do what holy spirit is prompting you to do never hold yourself back peter says you are chosen people you are chosen people royal priesthood a holy nation god's special possession we are not just ordinary people we are special possession of a heavenly father meant to do special work now preaching probably is not all the time probably the special work as we see all the time maybe your one word maybe your one sentence can bring a transformation in somebody's heart which a probably a great preaching of half, half an hour probably may not be able to do commit yourself to do what god has enabled you to do because you are chosen 
I don't believe that anyone sitting here are not chosen or is not chosen. Every single one of us, because we are part of his church, if body of Christ, we are chosen. You know, there are many other people, many people who have come forward, dedicated, committed their life. And because of their decision and their obedience, one person's obedience in different parts of a nation, we have seen the community being transformed. We have seen how people have come to know Christ and his saving power and his grace, his love, his peace and his tra transformating power in their lives. How their life have been changed because of one person's commitment or obedience. Can we men and women, would you be that person who will strongly believe that I am the chosen one? That I am the chosen one. Just like Bezel was chosen for his century, you and I are chosen for his kingdom. Despite all limitations, if you look into the pioneer of servants of God, despite all limitations, language barrier, culture barrier, they have crossed their boundaries and they have gone ahead with the gospel. They have gone with the good news and shared to make a difference in the community where Christ's name has never reached. Would you be that person? for your neighborhood, for your community. This morning, God's invitation is open to each one of us. And it is personal to each one of us. It's not just general invitation, but a personal invitation. Second point, I am able because God made me able. I am able not because of my own strength. I am not able because of my own muscle power. I am not able because of my own money power. I am able because he made me able. 35 verse 31. And he has filled them with the spirit of God. The skill, ability, knowledge. Everything they wanted. God had already filled them up. He made them able so that they can work in the craftsman. That ship of that required in the sanctuary. What do we see here in the text? That they were filled with the spirit of the Lord. Victor Hamilton, the author of Exegetic Commentary of Exodus book says, that means the first spirit-filled individual in the Bible probably is not a great patriotic, but Bezalel, a layman person, a construction foreman. Such a calling is no less sacred and is no less in need of divine enablement than that of Moses, the liberator, or Aaron, the supreme priest. His vestment may be overalls, a hard hat, steel toe boots, but his vocation is from God and his work is to honor God through the employment of his God-given skills. When you look into your life, what do you think is the skill that God has given you? Take a moment in your life. Here or maybe at home. Look into your life and see what are the skills that God gave me. That I can use it for his kingdom. That I can use it for his service. That I can use it for his church. The use a phrase, the Spirit of the Lord or Spirit of God, possibly implies that the creative force present at creation is like what's present in building of the tabernacle. And I strongly believe that creation force, which we see in the book of Genesis, is still here among us to give us the strength that we need to go forward, to move forward, to do the work of the Lord in the way that God has enabled you. In the New Testament, we see Jesus being led by the Spirit to have the victory over Satan. Peter, filled with the Spirit, received the ability to speak to the rulers. Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit. He saw heaven open and the glory of the Lord. Barnabas was filled with the Holy Spirit and brought a great number of people to the Lord. These men, filled with the Holy Spirit, did what they could do for the Lord, because God enabled them. Now it's the same spirit that dwells in us also. What decision we will make for the kingdom of God, for his church. As we see in scripture, they were also filled with wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and abilities, all kinds of skills. 
what i'm trying to say that whatever the way god prompts you god will enable you don't worry about how i'm going to do it if he has chosen you he will make you able to do it he will enable you with all the required skills he will enable you with all the required strength to do his work scripture says may god himself the god of peace sanctify you through and through the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it would you believe with me with that that he is faithful to enable me if i take one step of decision towards god towards my father who called me he is faithful trust in god and the provision that he has given try to exercise the gift that god has given i was very hesitant of praying in crowd i always fear of making mistake with my words or you know getting stumble in between prayer which i didn't want to kind of wanting to escape any embarrassment before people but i started to pray with one person at one point i had to start because that was the push in many times you feel the promptness of the spirit go and pray for that person go and pray for that person and one day i just took that decision to go and pray for that one person i couldn't do it before crowd but i took the step to go to that person sit with him spend time with him hear him and pray for that person that one step enabled me to now pray for others also whenever the holy spirit prompts me to do that and i strongly believe if you take that one step god is more than faithful to use you with the strength that he has given and with his spirit that he has given the third point i am not alone i am not alone many time we feel that how can i do it how can i do it alone you don't have to be part of an organization to be in a group wherever you are god is with you you are not alone the spirit of the lord is with you the only thing is we need to train our mind and our hearts to understand the presence of god along with side us we will feel the presence only in physical form if pastor matthew is with me i know that i am not alone but if he's not oh i am alone why can't i believe that god is with me and so i'm not alone we need to train our mind we need to speak to ourselves i am not alone it has to get into my mind we have to continuously speak the word of god speak to ourselves that i am not alone because god says god has given me the promise that he will never leave me forsake me which only means that he is with me all the time his presence is with me he has given me his spirit the spirit that comforts me that leads me that guides me i am not alone because he is with me what do we see in the text that we just read or referred we see moses and other people involved in the work of the sanctuary bezalel was not alone people who believed in god's vision they were involved in the form of offering bringing for the construction work skilled people were involved willing men and women were involved leaders were involved Now Bezalel if I would have been in Bezalel I could say oh lord this is such a huge task building constructing your tabernacle no no I don't think I can do it I need more people I don't think I have read that in the text where they say we need more people because there were people already involved and because it's not people's plan it's not an individual plan it wasn't Moses plan it was God's plan and so God already placed people in the right place for you to work along with them and above all God is with them because the selection of Bezalel was not done by Moses it was done by God himself God is very much involved in the whole process the moment he thinks he plans for you from there he is involved with you even before you even think of it even before you surrender yourself to the call and the vision of the lord god is already planned everything for you to step in boldly 
having complete faith upon him. Most importantly, God's involvement with his people throughout the construction. He was with them all the time. We also see in the life of Joshua, God asked Joshua to be courageous. Not to be afraid. Even though there were many people, but it's quite natural that when we want to step into a task, doing something for the Lord, even though we may see hundreds of people in the church along with us, but we still feel probably not the right time because I don't think I can do it alone. Well, every single people that we see in the kingdom, they are involved in the way that God has planned for them. And similarly, you also have been called with a specific plan and purpose to serve the kingdom. What do we see in our community? What do we see in our nation? Let's take this church. Can anyone say that I'm not alone? I can't do it. The pastor is involved. The pastors, team of pastors are involved. The elders are involved. The volunteers are involved. Other people are involved in their own capacity where God has led them. How can I say that I cannot do it alone? People are involved along with you. And above all, God is with you so that you don't feel alone because he is leading you. He is the one who promised for the Lord God will be with you wherever you go. That's promised for Joshua. In New Testament, Jesus assuring his people, I'll be with you always to the end of the very age. I encourage you to receive this promise. Whenever you think that I am alone, I can't do it on my own. Remember this promise. That God has given to Joshua, that Jesus has assured his people, his ministry time is the same spirit is with us. He is giving us the full Confidence and assurance that we will never be alone, but they, the triune God himself is involved in the leading the God we have received from his spirit. The very triune God is involved in the work that he is calling us to do. Don't consider any job, any work as a small work. Even if you think, oh, I just have prayed for two minutes, but the two minutes have power, the life transforming power, not because of what the words I have used or the prayer that I've prayed, but because of the presence of triune God in and through your prayer for that person. The involvement, more than my involvement, the involvement of triune, our heavenly father, the holy of holy is involved with you in that prayer. So it's important, it's significant. Every single thing that you do is significant and you are not alone because God is with you. My friends, my brothers and sisters, I encourage you to take that bold step. If you are hesitant of anything, if you are hesitant of not knowing what to do, ask the Lord, go on your knees and pray, Lord, I have a heart, I want to do something, but you lead me. Show me the way that I should go out and move forward. Give me a boldness to take one step ahead, Lord. I know that I probably will not get the whole group of all the things that I need to do, but one step at a time, if you give me the confidence and strength, if you are with me, which I probably not believe all the time, give me the strength to have faith in you, give me the strength to believe you, that you are with me and I'm going to take that one step Lord I'm going to take that one step today to do what you have enabled me to do and to do what you have called me to do take that bold step as a response to God's call in faith commit to see a difference in you and in the kingdom of God commit to see the difference not only in other people's life, but also in us. The need of the hour is to take that one step. And that is our response. Our response to the promptness of the Holy Spirit. Our response to the reading of the scripture where we feel that God is speaking to us. Our response when we hear the message, oh, this is the word that God has given me. And I'll be encouraged. You know, hearing the message is always encouraging and motivating. And then after that, once you step out from this gate, I don't know where the encouragement goes and motivation goes off. But something is very different within the boundary. But the actual life begins outside the door. That's where God is looking at us, our response. 
listening being encouraged being motivated filled up with the spirit is good but god is looking at the response outside the door in your neighborhood in your community at the your workplace god is looking at your response it was important for bezalel to listen to god but listening is not enough my friends he had a willing heart now when you listen to god and when you respond in your willingness god will take you to a different journey of serving him my friends if you are here wherever you are know that god has placed you know that god has placed you if you are in relationship with christ jesus wherever you are is not accident it is a divine plan understand identify that plan identify your skill in your area and be willing to take that bold step maybe this morning you feel deep in your heart in your spirit that you are called for a specific person purpose but then you do not know what to do or probably you do not have the courage i encourage you to commit to the lord when a simple i i still remember how i responded and it was not a long prayer i was disturbed in my heart i know that i need to do something but i don't know what to i went to the rooftop and i said lord it's enough i have been struggling in my mind this was battle of mind you know i can't take it any more all i want to say here i am use me the way that you want me to be used use wherever you want me to use i am here use me lord that's the only prayer that i prayed and god has been using me since then and i've seen god's faithfulness in my life if you are such a person do not know what to do hesitant fear or anything that is holding you back let's take a moment in prayer as i conclude this message knowing that i want you to believe with me about your selection you are chosen because god chose you you are enabled because god has made you able and you are not alone but god is with you